Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wal Aqibatil Muttaqeen, Wal La Udwan, Illa Allah Zalimeen, Wa Sallallahu Wa Sallam, Ala Nabiya Muhammad, Wa Ala Ali Wa Sahbi Wa Sallam, Ayu Ahbab. Continue on in the last portion of our discussion about Hawa from the treaties and perspective of Ibn Jawzi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. We reached the section in the last portion where he discusses the importance of the rehab or the rehabilitation of your hawa, of your desires. And as we mentioned prior to this, we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam in the dunya halawat al-khadira wa inna Allah subhanahu mustakhlifukum fi fa yandru kifa ta'amaloon fa taqud dunya wa taqud nisa fa inna awla fitna bani Israel kana fi nisa so in the hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that fear the dunya and fear the women for verily the first trial that befell the children of uh, bani Israel is that it was the women meaning they were tested with their desires their desire for women and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said a dunya sijinu mu'min wa jannatul kafir that the this life is the the paradise for the believer and the uh, the prison for the disbelief uh, this is the this life is the paradise for the disbeliever and the uh, the prison for the believer so letting us know that harnessing our desires is important and also we look at the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we'll see the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam spoke to us the, uh, about the importance all throughout the sunnah of making tawbah and Allah ordered us to make tawbah tawbah to Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to make tawbah more than 70 times a day alayhi salatu wa sallam so ayul ahbab we're in need of rehabbing ourselves and our character to come closer to Allah and harness our hawa Ibn Jawzi, he said, rahimahullah ta'ala, in this last portion of the treaties, he said, know that when a human acts in accordance to his hoa, he will find in himself disgrace and humiliation. Even if this hoa does not harm him, that is because he feels subdued by his hoa. But when he overcomes his hoa, he will find in himself honor and pride as he will feel triumphant and victorious. For this reason, when people see an ascetic, meaning a person who has zuhd, they become amazed by him and they would kiss his hand to show respect because they perceive him as a person who is strong enough to leave what they were weak in the face of and that is disobeying Hawa. Allahu Akbar. Ayul Ahbab. Making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and harnessing your desires is an obligation upon the mu'min. And as Ibn Jawzi mentioned, that when a person acts in accordance, accordance with their lowly desires, for example, the person who commits zina, person who goes out, they know, they feel that the hypocrisy, if they're a, a believer, I mean, that's just a person who's a Muslim, they're in the fold of Islam, they have some iman, then they're going to feel, you know, their iman is low at that time, but they still feel something. They know they were out of pocket. They shouldn't have been at the club. They shouldn't have been drinking. They shouldn't have committed zina. They shouldn't have watch the pornography, they shouldn't have masturbated, they shouldn't have did smoke the weed, whatever it is, that they feel disgrace and humiliation. And I was listening to something, a beautiful thing, by Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Razak Ibn uh, Ibn Abdul Mu'min uh, Ibn uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak Al-Badr, half of the Allah Ta'ala, one of our mashayikh in Medina, and he, he said about he was talking about the major sins and about the desires or he mentioned a great benefit he said that the person doing these major sins that and feeling sorry afterwards or what have you this is a sign that they're from Ahl Iman and this is a sign of their Iman that was very beautiful why 
Because the fact that they feel any shame and any sorrow and any disgrace shows that they have Iman. But the one who disbelieves in Allah doesn't even care. They will advertise doing sin. They will try to get multiple partners on the internet. Uh, you know, polyamorous -am relationships. 25 husbands, 25 wives. It doesn't matter. They will have sex with an animal even. Some of the people. Some of the people they do, they have sex with animals. And they put it on the internet and they advertise it and they seek, seek out those kind of relationships. What is lower? What is misguidance after misguidance? They, you can't go any lower. You can't go any more disgraceful with your, uh, with your following your desires and the sickness of it. People who are uh, pedophiles. Can you get any sicker than that? That is a, a sickness and a wickedness and an evil following of their desires to where they perpetrate a crime upon the children. The most innocent amongst us. They prey on them. What kind of sickness, what kind of illness is worse than that and lower than that in relation to their desires? Nothing. And they don't even feel shame, a lot of them. A lot of them, they don't feel shame. They, 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 they sell that stuff. They just busted a huge porno, pornographic uh, child pornography ring that was around the world. The individual like that, he felt no shame. He was making money off selling pictures of our children. Not pictures, but pi and, and children that are like slaves, sex slaves, that are captured in bondage to, the, to these psychopaths. Even though those people don't feel, they do the evilest of acts, they don't feel any shame. But the mu'min, the believer, even if they do something much less than that, hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, even though the, you know, we don't want any sins, we want to avoid all sins, but the mu'min, the person who has some iman, that even if they do a small sin a lot of times, they feel sorrow. They know they shouldn't have lied. They know they shouldn't have... Uh, 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 cheated so and so out of that couple of dollars or whatever, whatever the situation was, or they they spoke about someone and they shouldn't have. They feel shame about that if they if they have iman. So that's a faida about ahli iman when it comes to their hoa, and that's why Ibn Josie he said he said he will find himself disgrace in in himself disgrace and humiliation. He'll find that in himself. Why? Oh, that's because it's Dalil. That's evidence he has Iman watching his Hoa. He has some Iman. It might be low, but he feels something. He feels some shame. That's the state of the Mu'min. And he said, even if this Hoa does not harm him, that is because he feels subdued by his Hoa. But when he overcomes his Hoa, he will find in himself honor and pride, and he will feel triumphant and victorious. Allahu Akbar. And this is so powerhouse. This is so powerful. What he said, and I, I can't think, you know, to, to see that self of our, of our ummah, how they were dealing with these actions. Ayul Ahbab, if you've ever had a sin that you've struggled with and you overcome it, you feel the triumph and you feel the victory. And that is a great ni'mah from Allah. That is a sign of Ahli Iman. And that is a beautiful thing uh, to overcome sin. And may Allah bless us to overcome our sins. And may Allah bless us with a class with a bat. And have mercy upon all of our ulama and Ibn Jozi in particular. And bless him with Jannah for those. And may Allah forgive us of all of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.